Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ya brach. May be seated. Hallelujah. We do brach. Yeah, for all things. We simply bow before his presence. We simply acknowledge him for all things and everything that he has done and what he will do. It is vitally important for people to acknowledge him and that we reckon whom he is. That is important for us to do that. And above all that, we must know him. We must iyada. We have to experience him. And the way we experience him is our faithfulness and obedience unto the Torah. We cannot, Yisra'ya, be pretenders, and falsehoods, and, and speak judgment against one another. And then we practice the things that we speak judgment against our ach or our achot. It is hypocrisy to the tilt, to the hilt. And we must govern our hearts and our minds that we will walk in the Torah of Yah. I ask our Zachin Ramiya to allow me to speak tonight a simple truth. I want to move through this, but we need to hear this. I want you to understand that there are things that are vital and essential to our growth. They're vital and they are essential to our growth. It is one thing that you began to prune the trees, they look as though that they are barren. You began to prune off the branches, you began to cut back, you began to cut hearts. And from the looks of it, it looks as though that it will not produce anything at all. But yet it brings about the restoration of life in that fruit-bearing tree. And we need to allow the Torah of Yah to cut down into the depth of our bosom uh, and to separate us from that which is vile, evil, uh, and wicked. And that is the truth, Yisra'ah. We must allow his Torah to cut to the depth of our inward parts and sever everything that is not of him. I want to teach tonight on a valid and an important subject tonight. I am not one that title messages but this one on tonight i certainly have uh, a title for it yisrayah i want to speak from the point of view of the crown i am talking about the crown and i want to take my time and define the meaning of the words not in some form of intellectual perspective but to open up the depths of the riches what yah speaks unto yisrayah it is one thing that language has confined us. That we don't understand the legitimacy of his power. And if we don't understand that we will not grow in wisdom. And if we have no wisdom, that we have no confidence uh, in what he speaks unto us. I want to speak from this plateau tonight. Uh, the crown of a man's beauty and strength. I'm talking about the crown. I am not talking about the Get uh, the crown uh, that we see on the heads of kings. Uh, but I'm dealing with a different crown tonight, all right? Uh, I am talking about the atara. The crown, it is his atara. It shows his rank, his position, uh, his power. That that is what a crown does. It signifies the position of that man. Uh, it is a mark of the excellence of his blessings uh, that come from Omar Yah. And there is a crown that Yah, an atara, that he has given on to man. And it personifies his tifra, his beauty, and the tifra are the attributes of Almighty Yah. It is the beauty of Yah, it is the essence of Yah, it is the charm of Yah, it is the wondrous, magnificent majesty of Yah. And yet there is a crown that Yah has given on to man, that it is a mark of his blessings, his strength, his beauty, his character, his might and his power, his koach, his strength, his might, his might of his military power, that he is able to battle and to war against the opposition of hell in a mighty way. And every man, every man of you needs a crown upon his head. She is the blessed strength, the crown of Yah. I want to begin here in the book of Mishli, Proverb. 
And I speak on this behalf because I have watched how the enemy has robbed the beauty of the woman. And so she is trying to supplement her beauty with false things that the world offers to create this stimulation that she perceives that she is beautiful. And that she presents an image that is so false and so erroneous that it does not present the beauty of Almighty Yah. I want you to hear this tonight as how the enemy has robbed the bath of Tizayon, the crown. We are talking about the Atara, the crown, the excellence of a man's power, his position, his rank. And there's a crown that personifies his rank. And when men see him, they will know that that man, that is something about that man is different than all men. It says here in Mishli, chapter 12, verse 4, it talks about a chayil, a virtuous woman. It is a woman of great strength. She has strength in her loins uh, in the Torah of Yah. By her obedience, her faithfulness, her diligently, diligency, uh, as she labors with her hands uh, according to the commands of Almighty Yah. A virtuous woman. She has the wealth of Torah. She has uh, the knowledge of Torah. She has the ability to walk uh, within the confines and the framework uh, of the Torah. That is a special uh, gem uh, that is very far and few in between Yisra'ya. And when Yah talks about a virtuous woman, uh, he is not talking about a woman uh, that has not engaged a Bethula, a woman that has not engaged with a man, her husband man. That is not the woman he is talking about. He is talking about a woman of strength, a woman of beauty. As he has given unto the earth women of that nature, that the assembly of Yah can see the beauty of her and understand its place uh, in the order of Almighty Yahweh. And so a virtuous woman, a woman that loves the strength of Torah, her ability to understand Torah and to walk in Torah, it resonates from her countenance. Her face shines with the beauty of Yah. It shines with the Tiferah because the attributes of Yah, her place, her position in life is personified above this masquerading false image that women think that it is the beauty and the pleasure of Yah, but it's not Yisra'ya. Is not daughters of Tizayon, but a virtuous woman. Says she is a crown, she is an atara, she is uh, an eternal blessing from all Maria. I will get into the depths, my friend. She is a blessing, she shows uh, the beauty of the man's position, his rank, his character. She personifies the strength of his beauty, his strength. She is a crown of the strength and the beauty of any man. Because a wise man, he has sought Yah carefully. He doesn't make a move outside of the parameter of the Torah. And it is one thing about a daughter, a Baptist, I own. She does not operate outside of the realm of the Torah. She does not operate in, uh, in the fallacies uh, of fictitious life uh, or a livelihood. But she operates outside of the obedience because she has a love affair with the Torah of Omariah. Yah. And she is a gem that cannot be measured uh, with the substance of the earth. She is so precious that there is nothing like her. Her price is far above anything uh, that we can find that is superficial uh, upon the earth today. So a virtuous woman. A woman who has strengthened herself uh, in the knowledge of the Torah. A woman that has walked in obedience and compliance uh, unto the Torah of Yah. A bath uh, who delights in the Torah, who shines uh, for the excellence uh, of the beauty of Torah. She is an atara, she is a crown. She is a strength. She is a blessing. She is a mighty power 
unto the mind. Uh, she is the riches of a man's mind. Why? Because uh, everything she is, uh, his mind reflects that. Uh, everything that she embodies, uh, his heart uh, is faithful to those things. Uh, so there is no crown like a virtuous woman, a woman of strength. A woman that loves you, there are those that think that I batter the daughters of Tizaya. No, I batter against sin and the wickedness. How the enemy take the essence of their beauty and transform the path into something that is hideous and unattractive and very ugly today. And that's what the enemy has done. The powers of hell have raised up men like this. Pig down there in Texas, T.D. Jakes, to tell the bath, the women, uh, woman thou art loose. That's a lie from hell. And so it gives these false illusions. Uh, and the women are not attractive. They don't have the beauty that Yah intends uh, for them to have. Uh, she is a crown. We must understand what the Atara is when Yah makes mention of that in Torah. I say to us as a people, uh, we do not extend ourselves uh, when it comes to grasping the knowledge of the Torah. We limited ourselves because uh, we limited Yah and we really don't have time uh, for Him. We don't have time for Torah because we don't delight in Torah. A woman will sit in front of the mirror and make sure that her hair is proper and everything. She will spend hours in a beauty salon. She will spend time getting her toes done and her fingernails done. But she does nothing for her inward parts. It is all a physical attraction that fades as the night began to approach. It fades. It is a delusion. And then the next day it is gone, it is abated. Uh, so she must uh, refine her suffragan. Uh, but it is one thing about the Atara, the crown. Uh, she is a street, she shows the blessings uh, of her man. Uh, she speaks of the power and position of that man uh, in the presence of God. Do you understand the beauty of a GM today, daughters uh, of Tizayon? We don't understand that, Yisrael. Because we deal so much in a fictitious world. In a false delusion of an image. This is what the Torah says. Has nothing to do with me. It's either we believe it or we don't believe it. It says that a virtuous woman, a woman of strength, a, a woman that is lively in the Torah, a woman that delights in the Torah of Yah, a woman that her actions, her philosophy, her ideas are, are shaped by the Torah. It says that she is an atara, she is a crown to her husband. She is a crown to her husband. A crown, the atara of Yah, his crown is the eternal blessing. And that is what a true virtuous woman is. She adds strength and life to her husband, to her ish. Yah has given her a position that is so profound and so beautiful. And as the enemy robbed Hava through her own lust, through her own depravity, she disobeyed the commands of Yah and then she brought shame, Yisra'ya. And that is what the woman is doing today. The woman, the assembly, it's supposed to be an atara, a crown, to the head of Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our mighty king. We're supposed to walk in the effectiveness and the efficiency of the power of the Torah. Our reliance is upon the Torah of Yah and not our flesh. Our delight is in the Torah of Yah and nothing else. We show the blessed assurance uh, of the promises of Yah in Yoshua HaMashiach. That's why a virtuous woman, she is an atara, she is a crown. She's a crown to her ish. Yoshua is our husband man. He is coming for his ish. When he comes, he is expecting uh, to wear a crown, his atara, the crown of her beauty of her strength, of her charm, of her character. And the enemy takes the minds of the daughters today 
and tries them in some of the most immature, insignificant things. And so what a man seeks far and near for a wife, he can only relate to what is sent to Allah because that is how his mind has been shaped by the sensual activities and the affairs of his own life. But it is one thing of a virtuous woman, her strength and her beauty, her charm speaks of the elegancy uh, and the beauty of her character, characteristic. Uh, she is in command and she is in charge. No, she is not loose. Uh, she is not free from the Torah of Yah. She is not free from the order that Yah commands. Uh, she is not loose from that. Uh, she has more liberty than those that think uh, that they are free, Yisrael. He has given her a crown of beauty that speaks of his excellence. Uh, and the powers of hell are constantly robbing her of that uh, out of her bosom, Yisrael. She is an atharah, she is a crown. She signifies the position uh, of that man she is a crown a virtuous woman she is a crown to her husband but she that maketh a shame is as rottenness in his bones one that brings dishonor to her rush her head it is a vile repugnant action it is a shame it causes rottenness it causes diseases the can lead to overtake a man that there is no pleasure and that is what we're causing to Yahshua Hamashiach it is not a delight for him to come into our minds because uh, we reject the Torah of Yah it is not a delight for us to hear the Torah of Yah to refine us in the image uh, of Yahshua Hamashiach it is not a delight in us to allow the power of the Torah to shape, to mold the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach in us as a nation and in us individually. That we all speak the same thing. That we all walk the same walk. That we all say the same thing, Yisra'ya. And so he grants unto man. When a man seeks him with all of his love, when the desire of a man is to please Yah. He calls the virtuous bath of desire. Those that have bathed themselves in truth. They have not bathed themselves in the odorous odors of the world. But the bath has bathed herself in the Torah of Yah. Her garments are purged by the Torah of Yah. Her cloak is polish by the refining of her trials and her tribulation that she waits upon the promises of the Torah without shaking at all and when that one that seeks for Yah with all of his heart he opens the door to that man that he may find that which is of strength to exalt his rank his position and his power that's what she's for in this damnable wicked generation that robs the daughters, prostitute them. I will not do that. I have never done that. You demean them. No, they demean themselves. Uh, whereby I take the sword of the Ruaka to show them what is the pleasure of Yah. There is nothing more beautiful than a crown. And she is the atara of a man that is faithful and that loves Yah. She is a crown. She is the crown of the, uh, the strength, the might, the power, the intelligence, the Torah wisdom of a man. She speaks of that. Why? Because he speaks in his home and she reflects that. He counsels her in the power of the Torah and she reflects that. This is a generation that reflects the vile, repugnant, uh, virulence of their own love today, Yisrael. It cannot be among Yisrael. It cannot be among the Baptist Zion. It cannot be, Yisra'ya. They are trying to draw attention by the way of the attraction of the world, but it doesn't work that way. She is the crown of a man. And there is only one that is a man where your sure is the strength and the head of that man. And what your sure is the head, 
the administrator of that man's life. He gives him a crown to signify his position, his rank. He grants him a crown and that's a virtuous woman. That's a beautiful daughter of strength. That's a woman that uh, is elevated uh, before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. We can't take this lightly. Yah has ordained a way. It is not according to your interpretation of that way. So what a man said is affection of Yah. He grants unto him the gem of the Atara a crown. To show his position with him. And so that virtuous woman, she is a crown unto the man. Where are the virtuous daughters today? The daughters of strength. Whose purpose above all is to please Almighty Yah. They submit themselves unto the living Torah of Yah. Where are they today, Yisrael? He said to Adam, when he saw that he needed a help meet, I want to define that this is a word that I copy the meaning of this word. Listen, when Yah said that this Isha would be his help meet, she would be his is a, she is a sucker or a special help to the man. And so because of my ignorance, I wanted to understand the definitive of the word sucker. You may say sucker, but it's sucker. S-U-C-C-O-R, sucker. And when I began to search out the text of the word sucker or the help me, the is a, this is what it means. I want to read this. This is what a helpmeet is. This is the strength and the power of the armament of a virtuous woman. She is one that relieves him from difficulties. We are the one that relieve Yoshua HaMashiach from the difficulties of the assaults upon him. She relieves him. She has the, she has the anointing healing of her hands, her speech, her touch. We're in a time whereby we need to be relieved. She relieves him of his difficulties. Of any want that he desires. Or his distress when there are things that are so complicated. And so complex and difficult to his mind. Just the speech of her words. Just the quietness of her presence. Just the beauty of her aura her to for all. It brings strength. Unto the crown of the man. It calls him to rise up. It calls his strength not to be abated. To rise up or get the opposition of hell. I will my friend. I am not one that teach intellectually. But I must define things so we can understand the beauty of what Yah speaks. She is one that is always consistently there. For his aid. When times are tremendously difficult. When the trials of affliction. When the burdens are pressed upon him. When the trials of the administration of the office. That he walks in his rank. His position. When all kinds of stress come upon him. She is there. That is the strength of a virtuous woman. She has strength in her loins. Why? Because her loins are, are girded. She guard the Torah of Yah. Because she guards her mind, her actions, her deeds. She guards her response and what she allows to go into her mind. She guards that. She doesn't allow just anything to go or to penetrate uh, the strength of her armor at all, Yisrael. She's there in the most difficult, that's what the word sakar or sakor is. In the midst of all of his difficult wants and needs and, and distress. And one of the most profound utterance of this definition uh, is that she provides, that is what the word is, uh, the help meets. When Yah says, uh, I will make, I will give you a help meets. One thing that she provides him with uh, the reinforcement 
for the battle that is ahead. And just her presence provides the strength and the assurance of that reinforcement. There is nothing like the virtuous daughter of Tizayon. And that's why the enemy is trying to, to draw the daughters away from the beauty of Torah and began to uh, bring them to this place, uh, this superficial avenue uh, of fictitious thinking, concepts, and thoughts that produce nothing at all uh, but dreams and wants and lusts. But Yah says to the Baptist Zion uh, that you are crown of beauty and of strength unto the man. In the midst of the most torrent battles uh, that you supply the weaponry of his loins, his heart, uh, that he can press on in the battle. Uh, the enemy has robbed the daughters down to nothing, uh, not even a pleasure of sensual flesh today. Because of the defiance, and Yah says, You are the A's, uh, the help meet. You are the reinforcement of his rush. You are the strength. You, brings the, you bring the beauty out of a man. You cause the excellence of my characteristics, of my beauty, and my majesty to flow from that man. You cause things to come out of him that nothing in the world can call and cause to come out of that man. Because you are a daughter, you are a Bethesayon, you are a Chayil, you are a woman of strength. Your, your armament of the military battle is always prepared. You keep the sword of the Ruach, it is always sharpened and ready to, to come against the adversary or the adversarial attacks of your mind that you will strengthen and be the beauty of that man's head. That's what we are as the, as the assembly. We are the beauty of the head of Yahshua HaMashiach. We are the Adra because it is our testimony of faithfulness and trustworthiness of Almighty Yah that we are strengthened in the midst of great battles. We don't lose resolve. We press on Yisrael. We're not cowards. We don't turn our backs and run away from you. And so there is only one thing that he gives us in the earth. That give us the example and the excellence of that. And that is the strength of a woman that's a high yield, a virtuous woman. Not a Beth Ula. Not a woman that has not had experience. A virtuous woman. She's one that has had experience. She understands the beauty of children. She understands the beauty of raising the, the man one of her loins that will speak after her ish. She understands that. She cares for that diligently. She watches. She protects. She's a crown. She is the atara of her husband. And what has the enemy done today? It saddens me. I preach or teach like this, people think I don't care. It's because I do care. And I know we as a nation, whether you're sitting here, those that are listening, those that will hear this, we don't care. We don't care for Yah. We don't really have a great love for Him. We have a superficial pretense, but we really don't use the right Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Bereshit, Yah says here in Bereshit, Genesis 2, 18. And Yah says, it is not tough for Adam that he should be alone, but he should be apart. It's not the most excellent thing for him to be alone. It's not the most excellent thing for the Ish to be alone. Yah says, I will make, do you understand? He said, I will asa, I will fashion, I will create from him the crown of his excellence. Do you not understand that's what the woman he is? She is the crown of a man's excellence. She is the crown of his beauty. Yah says, I will assa, I will fashion, I will form, I will shape, I will create out of the bosom of bo the bosom of man. I will create an aza, a help meet for him. 
And you see what the enemy has done to the beauty of the woman now? He has created this false image that is so false and superficial. She can sit for two hours to get her toenails done. She can sit in a chair to get her hair done. And allow the poison to be poured into her mind, into her skull, and her brain. And she thinks that's beautiful. Huh? She thinks that's the crown of her strength. Huh? And when she goes out, uh, she sees a woman uh, in the physical sense uh, that is much more voluptuous uh, than she is. Uh, that is not the crown of a man's strength. Uh, It is the virtuousness of the woman. She is a virtuous woman. Her loins are girded about with truth. Her shield, she guards her house by Imuna. Her helmet, her head is assured by the strength of the mouth of her ears. She speaks faith unto her to abide in the Torah of Yah. And so the powers of hell has created this dumbfound superficial image uh, that has nothing but to lay on your back. Uh, you are greater than that, Bath of Tizion. Uh, yeah. It's more to you than that. Yeah. It is the truth. Yeah. You're greater than that. Yeah. You are not to allow the enemy to rob you. Yeah. You are the beauty of a man's strength. Yeah. You are says it's not best for him to be alone. Uh, so he gave him a help meets and is uh, one that would succor, strengthen him to be the crown of Yah's assurance unto him. What a gem. That's why when a man finds a wife, when he finds a virtuous woman, her price is far above rubies. What Yah is saying, there is no price for the dowry. That one should not pay for her. She's greater than a kingdom. Her beauty is much more substantial than a city. You can buy the villa, the mansion. But when you find that kind of a woman, you have a crown. It adds strength and beauty to your life, man. And the world has robbed the bath of that beauty. And taken much, Israel. We need the messengers to restore unto them that which the canker worm has eaten. Damn, TD snake, this dog, that tell the daughters that they are loose. They are not loose from the Torah of Yah. They are not loose from the head, Israel. He made them to be a beautiful helpmeet and aids unto the man. Hallelujah. He said, I have, I will make him a help meet for man. He said, I will grant unto him one that will succor him, will help him. Even in the midst of his great battles, she will be the one that will relieve him. In his most difficult trial circumstances, in the battles of his great wants, she will relieve him. She is, she is the beauty of his strength. She is the one that shores up his strength. She is the one that brings the revitalization onto his bosom. Just her mere presence, just to look at her, just to look at her face when she's asleep, just to behold her, just, just to embrace her. It's not so today, Yisrael. The world trains them differently than that. I want to show us a few examples what this crown, and I am talking about the Ataran, and if we search the Khadve, we will find this word used in every expression of crown, Atara, that I will express quickly here in Mishli. Proverbs. Chapter 4 and verse 9. This is what Yah says. She, the wisdom of Yah, that's what the wisdom of Yah is. That is what a virtuous woman is. She is filled with the plethora of Yah's wisdom. She sa he says that she wisdom uh, shall give to your head uh, an ornament of him of favor. When a man finds a wife, he finds a tough thing. Is that not so? 
and he obtained favor paying with Almighty Yah. He has not moved by some impulsive desire. He has been a wise counsel in the Torah or one that has received the wise counsel of the Torah. The strength of his physical desire is overridden by uh, what the Torah commands and what the Torah speaks. Yisra'ah. So he searched for the riches of the crowd. He doesn't search for some false tarnished crown of false gold. He wants the real deal. He wants the crown. And so when he found this crown, he would pay anything for it. There is no price. Her price is far above rubies. You can't purchase a virtuous woman. Because of her strength, her might, her wisdom, her speech, her knowledge. You can't purchase that. So he compares her to wisdom. He compares her to an experience with him. She shall give to your head wisdom uh, an ornament of hand, of elegance and beauty. That's what a virtuous woman brings to a man. When they walk in the plaza, men will see the beauty. Her beauty is represented by her charm, her hand, her favor with Yah. And her husband man, he is well spoken of. When we represent the beauty of Yah as an assembly, then your sure Hamashiach is well spoken of, Yisrael. She is an ornament of favor of him. And not only that, but she is a atara, she is a crown of beauty. That's what a virtuous woman is. She is the crown of wisdom on a man's head. Well, you see that man, you see his isha, you see his wisdom. You see the beauty of love, you see the beauty of ikhat. You see the beauty of his tenderness, his mercies. You see the beauty of his gentleness. You see one that is hard and their spirit is matted with hardness. You know that that man has no wisdom, no understanding of Yah. When you find the bath that is cold and indifference, and she has no beauty to her countenance, I will get to that, Yisrael. He expressed her beauty as the, as the crown of wisdom. He expressed her, her characteristics as the, the crown of wisdom. She shows the beauty of that man, his strength to wait upon Yah and to seek out the face of your sure Hamashiach. He have not acted impulsively. He have not been driven by loss or desire. All of his actions have been based on the wisdom of the crown, of the knowledge of Torah. She's a crown of beauty. That's what wisdom is. A crown of Tiferan. It is an ornament of jewels, of the jewels of Yah. That's what it is. She is a crown of beauty, and she and shall and she is a crown, a crown of beauty. Shall she deliver or more gain to you? She shall be one. Uh, this more gain is a shield, one that rescues, one that provides the defense for you. As I would say often how in the days of past, in the 30s, 20s, and 40s, uh, mama would sit there at the table and she would call him papa. And she would be the one that rescued him at the end of the day in the midst of all of his agony. It was her virtuous nature, her strength, uh, where she knew where to abide. In the midst of all of his agony, she would give him the resolve and the strength. Uh, even through some of the most urgent and tasteful situations, uh, she will cause a strength to rise up in the man. Uh, and in the midst of the lying down at night on his bed, uh, she will not see him cry, but the tears of favor. He knew he had something special. Uh, and the tears would flow from his eyes. Uh, in the quietness of the silence of her beauty, she was meek. She was quiet. 
She was tender. Where is that today? And that's why the best Zachin must teach and show the young ones the Baptists are young by their actions, their deeds, their walk. That being so twisted in your superficial presentation of what you look like in your wares and your clothing, you dress chadosh. And more attention given to that than to the body of Yeshua, Hamashiach, something is wrong with us. Something is drastically wrong, Yisra'ya. We are sick. The whole head is sick, is what Yah says. We're sick. There is no rafa, no healing at all. Hallelujah. Her beauty is represented in the expression of wisdom. She's the crown. She is the atara, a virtuous woman to her husband. She's an excellent beauty. That her beauty can only be expressed in the attributes of Yah. His Tifara. And the Tifara is his majesty, his beauty. The character of Yah's beauty. He expressed that only in the virtuous woman. Only in the virtuous Bethesayon. Only in her, you see that excellence of Yah's almighty beauty, Yisra'ya. She represents, not only does she represent the power of wisdom, but she represents, as I said to us in the definitive uh, of, of Atara, the blessedness of Yah. She represents the prosperity of a man. His shalach, how he prospered. Not just in the material things, but in that. But above all, in the spiritual knowledge of excellence that bring, brings about an excellent beauty in this man. Look at what the Torah says here uh, in Yeshaya. He gives us a pattern and an example. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 55. He gives us this example here. As he speaks of the prosperity, the riches, the blessedness of Yehuda, he speaks here in Yeshaya 28 and verse 55. Yah says, in that day when he has judged Yehuda, he's going to judge Yisrael. And he's speaking of the time to come. In that day shall Yah of Sava be for uh, an atra, a crown, a splendor of CB. Do you hear that? That this is what she represents. She represents the crown, uh, a splendor of the CB, of the beauty of Omariya. Shall be a crown of splendor and for a diadem of beauty. To the remnant of his people. Now that is what Yah says as he judged Yehuda Yisrael in that day. He says that he is going to actually clothe them with, uh, with this crown of beauty. And so the bath, she represents this crown of beauty. And so the, the ish, the man, as he see the beauty of the virtuous woman, uh, he understands the beauty of what Yah has prepared uh, for the remnant of the house of Yisrael uh, and what he is going to do. Uh, that his beauty and the excellence of her excellent beauty, uh, it shows what beauty that Yah shall bring about upon Yisrael. Uh, it shall be a splendor and a beauty. There's no, nothing more beautiful and a beautiful baptism and her splendor is excellent. Her walk, her charm, her ruach is upright. There is nothing more beautiful than that. I look for that. Everywhere I go, it's difficult to find. And that is not to be little any bath. That's why God gives us a truth like this. Is that he zakha, he stir up. Our minds by remembering 
remembering what? What is written in the book. And then we began to have a love affair with that. We have a love affair with everything. We have a love affair with folly, immaturity, foolishness, food, all kinds of non-essentials. But when it comes to the Torah, there is no love affair for the Torah. We don't love the Torah because the Torah always finds us out and show us who we are. And show us in all that you do, Beth, you can put on your earrings, you can put on your Leslie Faye dresses and your $50 shoes. That does not create the beauty of Yah. It does not. It does not accentuate the beauty of Omani Yah. You can wear heels that high. It doesn't accentuate the beauty of Omani Yah. It is greater than that. It is beyond that. And you don't find that out by having a carnal, worldly mind and delighting in the things of the world. You don't find that out that way. You must have the mind of your shoe. You must have a pure mind. A mind that delights in the Torah of Almighty Yah. And when you have that kind of riches, you don't mind sharing it with anyone. It's only the poor individual that doesn't uh, want to share the, the, the smallness of one's substance with others. But when you're rich and powerful, uh, then you share that. And when we become truly baptized, Zion, uh, you have the riches of Torah. You want to share that with baptized, Zion. Uh. You want to train their minds, their actions, uh, their attitude to represent uh, the power of your kingdom. Uh. But the reason we don't do that, the reason we don't speak it, because we don't have... The beauty that God wants us to have. We need to begin to examine ourselves and govern our hearts and our minds. For we are far from where he wants us to be. And it's sad. It's sad. Because when we have laborers that labor in the Torah to bring unto us the bountiful Bountifulness of the wisdom of Yah's speech that we need to shemach. We need to open more than these ozen. We need to open this, our hearts, to receive the Torah of Almighty Yah. Let me press on. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the beauty. She is represented as this state that her wisdom and her beauty and her quietness. It counsels even her ish. And to give us a profound understanding of that, turn quickly to Giliana, Revelation 4 and 4. To express the beauty of this value of a true virtuous daughter to Zion, the Atara, the crown of a man's strength and beauty. It's not his physical proudness or his physical ability. Whether he's poor or rich, a virtuous woman, a woman of strength and life unto that man. I'll get to that. I want to finish this this evening, all right? Just bear with me. It says here in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 4, it talks about the presence of the throne of Yah. This is what this virtuous woman represents. She represents one that labors around the altar. Her prayer life is sincere. Very little prayer life today among Israel, among the Baptist and among the Ish of Tizayon. She represents uh, this elderly of this wisdom of Yah in the sense uh, that Yah says, and round about the throne, his case, uh, there were four and twenty seats. And upon the seat, I saw four and twenty elders. Sitting, clothed in the white raiment, or uh, in the purity of Yah's tzedakah, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. They had atara. It is one thing uh, that what uh, an aged bath does as she began to grow older. She begins to form on the man's crown. The diadem. 
That's why I read the verse of the diadems of the splendors of Yah, his splendor, his beauty. She began to create the diadems on his crown to speak of his excellence. She is the representation of the excellence of his wisdom, his strength, his beauty, his character. That's what she represents. And these four and twenty-four elders, they took their crowns off and they cast them before the feet of Yah to recognize and signify the honor that was due on to him. And so she is the crown that we take off in the presence of Yah and to honor him for what he has granted unto a man. And you allow the enemy to rape your bosom. Come on, Beth. We cast her name before Almighty Yah. The crowns represent the honor unto Yah. And so we say to Yah, I told you for the jewel and the gem of my strength and my beauty, the crown of my excellence, the crown of my rank, Yah. No, I'm not against Beth Tizayon. I'm against wickedness in any people. Above all in me. I'm against that. I preach this way to save me. To keep my house straight. So the elders, the four and twenty-four elders, the Atara. It shows where their strength came from. Their strength came from Yah. Their honor came from Yah. So they cast it before his throne. Our strength. And the strength of our endurance come from the high end. The high end. When I say that, people get upset with me. When I say that, 99.9% of the women, they don't know what it is to be a wife. My wife did not know what it is, what it was to be a wife. I did not know what it was to be a husband. I had no inklings, no knowledge. And the greatest teacher and the teaching uh, that I received when I watched men that I honored and I saw the diligence and the efforts with their spouse and then I knew to incorporate those attributes in my life, uh, it would be sufficient as Yah carry me along the way and teach me what is, uh, what is vitally important uh, in this process. And so the bath today don't know what it is to be a wife. They don't understand the power of virtuousness. Because if you bath a clowning with the young bath of Tizayan, you're telling jokes and acting like nicompoons and fools. What do you expect of them? If you mutter and complain to them, what do you expect from them? How do you expect them to grow and to be strong at the represents the kingdom of their ish domain, his place of power and reverence? She's a crown that we can present before Yah and say, this is the crown of beauty you have granted unto me. This is my crown of strength. That's why she is above any price or anything can be priced. If there is anything that can be priced in, uh, in currency as value, her price is greater than that. It's greater than that. I'm not talking about one that caused shame upon her husband. She is rotten. You bath, you call shame, you're rotten. I don't care who you are. You're a rotten woman. You stink. You should never do anything to cause shame. Your crown of beauty to the man. You should never do anything to cause uh, shame upon a man. Your ish. Your sense is like rottenness. It's like a cancer disease uh, in the bone. You should never do that. You're not free to walk away from your ish, your, your ish. You're not free just to walk away. That's a lie from T.D. Jakes. In your own mind, you're not free to do it. You're not free to do it. 
A Jezebel will, but not a Ahio daughter. She's a young, she's a strength. When he's weak, she will make him strong. When he has no motivation, no driven, nothing that drives his bosom, she stands up and gives him a glass of water. That the sweetness of her kindness flow from her breast, from her heart. He drinks from the system of our love and his strength in his bosom. It causes the tears to flow, but it brings great strength unto him. She succor him. She is the relief. She is the help. In the midst of the mighty storm, she brings relief because uh, she is always prepared. The word higher really means uh, one that is of army. She is, she is an army just along she is. She is, a, she is a mighty little fortress. She's ready for the milchaya, for the fight, for the battle. And you see how the enemy has robbed that Zion. It's so sad. And people think that I am cruel and think that I have no sensitivity. I tell you the truth. I show you the truth. I remind to write me the other day. He says, Re'ach, I have no problem with you saying the word damn. We need somebody to preach us the damn truth, man. We need truth. That's why we are sick the way we are. That's why you can, we can do things, daughter, and you hold things in your heart, and you know you're evil as hell. And your conscience is so damn twisted and seared, you don't even, you don't even repent of it. Come on, Ark. Come on, oh, something is wrong. Something, something is right in your heart. You know you're wrong. You're hard. You have no sensitivity to, to reach out. That's what the strength of a virtuous woman is. Even when the man has been battered and beat down. She's a strength. Disability cause strength to rise in his bosom. Today a man goes home. He's been battered and bruised. And hell, she bruises him even worse. That's a piece of flesh. But a bath, tis I of chayil. She brings strength to his bosom. She causes him to rise up when his body is weak and feverish. Her wisdom of her action causes him to rejoice. The wisdom of her strength speaks to his mind when she doesn't speak. Her countenance speaks to him. And men in the marketplace see her countenance and her beauty. And they say, what? She's a beautiful bath. She's a precious bath. You don't have to love me. That's all right. I know if you don't love Yah, you can't love. And the reason you can't love him because you can't love yourself. And if you can't love yourself, you cannot love me like you love yourself. I'm straight with me. I am forthright and honest with me all the time. I speak to my ears. I upbraid me. I reprove. I rebuke. And when I perceived that I made a statement or said something among the arms that I wasn't sure, I will make sure I correct that. That's the way I am. Something is wrong, Bath, when you can harbor wickedness here and not wisdom. Something is twisted in your mind, my friend. There's a disease there, and you must be healed. And he sent forth his Torah and healed them. Moving on quickly here in Yeskel, Ezekiel. We greet you all that have joined us. This is Reach Dawid Israel. I talk with an ark today. He said, I want to call in and tell the people that they don't even realize what they have, the blessed. Assurance that Yah has granted unto them there. Say they really don't. Because they don't know what's out here. 
It says in the book of Yeskel, in the book of Ezekiel. This is Yisrael. This is the beauty of his bride. Are we not Yisrael? Okay, let's see what it says in Yeskel. Ezekiel 16, verse 9. Yah says this is what he's going to do with his bride. Listen. He can only do this. Yeskel 16, 9. Then I wash or I rachatz. The fuller. I wash. I'm going to cleanse. I wash. I will. He says, then I will wash you with water. Yes. I thoroughly, Yah says, rohads, wash away the blood from you. And he says, and I such, I anointed you, Yisra'ya. I poured the oil of anointing and the oil of gladness on you. He said, with oil, I anoint you with my oil, my riches, and my fruitfulness. That is what uh, the crown or the virtuous woman is. She brings uh, the oil of gladness and anointing to the man's head. And not only to his head, but when other men see her, they rejoice. When other men see her, they rejoice. And they will say, I would delight if my wife was of that characteristic or character and beauty. Hallelujah. Yah says this, listen now, this is what he is going to do. This is what he has done for the true identity of Yisraeli. He said, I clothe you also with broadest or orichma, beautiful colors, diverse colors of work. And I shod you with badger skin. I gird you about uh, with fine linen. I covered you with silk. I adored you also with ornaments. And Yah says, not the world. But Yah says, I know fun. I put uh, the saw meat. I put bracelets. He didn't tell you to put them on. Yah says, I will put, I put bracelets. I put bracelets uh, upon your hand. Uh, and chains of the, of the robe. I put them there. Not you buy the gold chain. Yah said, I will put it there. Yeah. I want you to hear this. He said on your neck. Yah says, I put the nimzim or the jewels uh, in your forehead. I put it there. Not you putting it there. Yah said, I put it there. And Yah says, I will put the earrings. I put the earrings in your ears. Uh, and a beautiful crown upon your head. He is speaking unto Yisrael. He is speaking unto Jacob. He said, I give you a crown. A virtuous estate. I give you a virtuous wife. And she shall be the other on the street. He said, I put the crown upon your head, Yisra'ah. You must understand that Yisra'ah came out of Yaakov, the supplanter. We are Yisra'ah. We are the elect. We are the ones that overcome. And Yah says unto Yaakov, I put the crown, I put the crown, the atara upon your head. He is the crown of Yisra'ah's strength, isn't it? Is not Yah the crown of our strength? Is he not the crown of our magnificence and our beauty? And he grants unto us, among us, the virtuous woman to show us the beauty of that. And when we see that, we regard him even the greater. Come on, Baptist Zion. Come on, man. You got to stand up. You got to get your heart in tune with the Torah of Yah. You can't be a hypocrite. You can rebuke others and you do the same thing. You can't speak against the ways and the actions of others and you do that. That's wrong. I'm not that kind of a man. When I say it, I mean it. I stand strong and I stand firm. I'm not that kind of a man. I will not reprove this man or that man. If then I go do what I say they did, something is wrong with me, man. I won't do that. I'm not going to do that, Yisra'ya. I'm not a pretender. I will bring you the truth. Told on my friend. I will. I will preach. I want to teach, but I will preach, all right? Yah says, I will put the crown. Listen. 
man, he will put the crown upon your head. He will give you a virtuous woman. Don't be driven by your flesh. Come on, man. Don't move hastily. Don't go beyond the laws of Yastora. Come on, would an Eva raise up her daughter to be virtuous? She's a strong, beautiful woman. In our days, the mothers raised up their daughters to cook, to clean. Those young girls at 13, 14, they were ready to be married. They command things. I was speaking to one today, and I had spoken unto Akshimri and Yosipia one day. I think uh, while Sadak was there. And I was talking about the 60, how that I really, when I reminisce, I enjoyed the 60s. It was a quiet time. It was a pleasant time. It was a beautiful time. It was a simple time. It was a togetherness time. Our neighborhoods were together. It was a concern. When I said to this man today, when I said when I was in the military, these men, we didn't even know ya. But we had a camaraderie of great fervent compassion and caring. And I said when they would leave, we would cry. We meant that. We had a friendship. And those drill sergeants, I said to this, uh, because he spent tours in Vietnam, He's 65 years old. I said to him, I said, those drill sergeants cared about us. Two and three do, tour duties in Vietnam, they had watched some of their most precious friends die. And they would holler and yell, and they reminded us over and over and over and over again because they would say, it doesn't take but one mishap, and you're dead. We must be reminded of this over and over and over. The bath must be reminded of the beauty of baptism. That's why the Torah was always read over and over and over and over to remind us to keep this in our minds. And so the enemy has replaced that with foolishness, hasn't he? We go over the same gossip and the folly over and over and over, don't we? That's what we do. The same silly mess, don't we? Sure, that's what we do, Yisra'ya. Moving quickly. Yah says, I will put the jewels on. I will put the beautiful crown upon her head. He said, that this, he said thus were you decked with gold and silver, silver. And your raiment was a fine linen and silk and brought it work. And you did eat the fine flour and honey and oil. And you were exceeding, you were exceeding beautiful. And you did prosper in a kingdom, into a melchut. And your fame went out from among, among the goem, the nations, and your beauty. For it was perfect, it was kali, it was entire, thoroughly, through my splendor. Yah says, which I put upon you, says Master Yah. When a man finds a wife, does he find an excellent thing? Only Yah will give a man that fears him a daughter that is chayim. She is his crown, and this is what this represents. She brings clothing to that man. She, she, she brings the, the beauty of Yah's, Yah's garment upon him. Her clothing, uh, even her attire, is one that is so beautiful and so, uh, so correct and so right. It caused him to dress his man right. The way he thinks, the way he operates, the way he responds. Yisraya, come on, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And there's only one thing that represents that. That's the daughter, that's the bath. Tizayon, that's Chayil. She's strong, she's a military, fortified, powerful individual. She's not slothful, she's energized, she works with her hand, she does it willingly. Her walk is one of strength and beauty. She's known, she's acknowledged in the marketplace, not to her because she has such beauty that no man wants to touch it. He speaks to her ish. He conveys the beauty of her to him, his crown. She is the talk of the elders because her beauty is so refined. We think because you got on earrings or your toenails painted. You think that's beautiful. Yah says he's going to put you on bracelets. He's going to put earrings in you. And not this cheap mess. And not this trash in the store. This gold of Yah's is more pure than the gold of Oprah. He's going to put earrings on us. 
He's going to put bracelets on us. He's going to put, uh, why? Because that represents that you are in possession. <clears throat> That's what the earrings, he's going to put them in the man. He's going to put the jewels and the heads of the baptized on. Don't you know that a keta has jewels in the crown? And so that's what the high yield woman represents. She represents the jewels of the blessings of Yah. She has the riches. Her, her words are valuable. Her speech is full of value. When she says something, it is, a, it is of great value. She's not about in frivolity and folly and clowning and playing. Her mind is always sober. She is serious about the activities of Yah. She is not anywhere grinning and skinning and laughing. She's not that way, Yisra'ya, because she always preparing uh, for the storm. Uh, she got everything ready when the ish comes in. Uh, everything is ready. That was, uh, that was an example we saw with our forefathers. The man never went in the kitchen and cooked anything. She took care of everything. His plate was ready. It was warm. His biscuits were made. His house was spotless, even though it was sparse, it was clean. She would haul the waters from the wells or from the creek and pour it in that old tub for him. He could wash up from a tremendous agony of the day. And it was all those little small things that refreshed him. He didn't know how to say, I love you, but he loved her greatly. And in many cases, when she passed on, he passed on to, or he passed, she passed. It was a fervent love there. It was a strength. You don't even find that today. She didn't complain about him. She didn't speak even in some of his, uh, his, his agony. She didn't complain about him. She didn't speak evil against him. She didn't do that. We speak evil against Yah because we don't really care for him much. He's not our friend. Yeshua is not our friend. Here's a prayer of thy weed. Hallelujah. The thanks is he told Yah for his answering of his prayer. The men that pray, Yah, send me an issue. A wife. And I pray that too. But you want a virtuous woman a strength as a man any man can go and fulfill his loss in the street today it's just a fact you baptize Ion. and it's based upon some kind of physical beauty then you can always find women that will look in some cases much differently than you their look their beauty in the physical sense may override yours, you understand? But there is something greater than all of that superficial beauty. It is the beauty of Torah love. Love for Torah, your mind train, your heart, your walk, by Torah. When a man sees one, he doesn't see a woman that look as though that she is broken down. He sees the beauty of her stride. He sees the beauty of her charm. He sees a crown with jewels in it. That Yah has placed those jewels, her experience, her love for Yah, her prayer life, her diligent, her hands are beautiful. Although they may have calluses, they're beautiful hands. He sees that. He doesn't see the spirit of one that is always muttering and calling on the demonic powers of hell and they're complaining and muttering. That's wickedness you don't have to love me someone will there's someone out there that will love me hallelujah that which says here in Tehillim Psalms 21 and 1 the kings or the melech shall joy in Yah's strength Psalms 21 and verse 1 he said I am the melech I will rejoice in your strength that is what the Hail woman, is she is a strength to the man's head. I'm telling you, Yisrael. Oh, yeah, and in your Yeshua, how greatly shall we gila, we shall rejoice. He says, you have given him his love desire. 
He gives the man his heart's desire. You desire something that is not of Yah, he'll give you that. You desire a virtuous woman, but there's a process to get there, to get that. Gem, she's a gem. He's not just given a virtuous woman unto any man. For his loss, for him to play out his little games, it doesn't work that way. You have not withhold on the request of my lips. See, praises to you, young. It says here, For you go before him with the blessing of tough things. And he shows us what this blessing of tough things is. That's what the Atara is. She is a blessing. She is the eternal blessing to the man's head. She doesn't curse him. She doesn't cause shame. She goes not out of her house or from under the covering of the wisdom of her head. Today's women talk to the ish any kind of way. And it causes him to retaliate. It's wrong. It is the beauty of her quietness and her brokenness that caused the man and the wisdom of Yah that proceeds from her bosom to search his love in a great way. But today's woman, they have been taught that as children to talk to their husband any kind of way because they've come up in homes like my home. No daddy, no, uh, uh, the mother not married. And it's wrong. It's wrong. He made her crown to make the man to reach into the, into the heavens above. That his mind is so overtaken by Yah. That his actions, his deeds bring the beauty of Yah to this precious gem that he has given him. He takes care of the crown. He polishes it. He makes sure that the jewels are there. Even when men have nothing, no financial resolve, just the beauty of their strength in their hand, when they do which is lawful and right according to the Torah, it brings about a great beauty and a great shining of his crown. But today's woman is not taught that way. You'd be surprised, I hear it all the time, the men. I said to my Isha, someone want me, us to join their list or friends to give them more recognition for their videos to go out and ours. And this young man, he was talking, and I just, for, I don't know, a minute or so, how that, how that, he was a man of the diasporas, and how that the women of the diasporas, how they talked to him, how they treated him, how they, how they vilified him. And all of a sudden, the women of the opposite, the women that are Caucasian, they find him very attractive. And now his, his concept about these women, it is very polluted. He doesn't give a damn about them. He doesn't care. And he wasn't no unattractive man. A very accomplished musician. Physically built. He said, but this is what I got. He says, and I do this for my own healing. I tell you the truth. See, when we began to confess our faults, it's for our own healing. We want to blame someone else, but our faults. When he said that, I wanted to say to my itch, come listen to what this man said. He doesn't even know y'all. He said, what well, all I went through, I'm saying this for my own healing. It is not as much as for you. I'm doing this. Uh, he said, this is, this is therapeutic for me. Because what I had to go through. I was ostracized. I was, I was me lying. And now it's a different thing. Now when they come to me, I, I have no attraction to them now. There's nothing there because... Uh, uh, you know, they're too immature. They're silly. Uh, and then they don't tell you they got a baby at home. They don't tell you this. He said, I'm not even attracted to them now. And baptize on you that are the diaspora. Uh, the men just, you know, because uh, your beauty, your beauty will draw the man a straight daughter. It's not just sexy hips. Uh, you can find women all day long uh, in the physical sense uh, that they got it. Wasted it than yours. I'll get out there in your waist is. Uh, your crown. That's why you must be virtuous. Clean and unspotted from the world. Hallelujah. That he says, for you go before me with the blessing of tough things. He says, you set an atara, a crown of pure gold on his head. That's what Yah does to a man. 
that seeks you. He gives him a crown and at the rod, a virtuous, a high yield woman of strength and beauty. That is what Yah does. And in this present world, there is not that many, period. I don't care what the women say. Folks are marrying. Yah said they, they would be marrying and given in marrying as it was in the days of Noach. And they will not even know the destruction of Yah is upon them until it comes. So that is not the sign of a virtuous woman because she's married. That's not the sign of a man of strength because he get married. When there's a truly a virtuous woman, men speak of her beauty. She's a crown to her husband, man. She's a strength. She's a sucker. She is an aza. She's a help meet. Even when he finds himself failing in the things of Yah, she just her strength along, her beauty along, calls him to rise up to that occasion to defend the heritage and the riches of Yah. He's there to defend that. She's a strength to a man. There's one thing about Shirach as he taught there in the University of Yerushalayim. He made some profound utterance unto the students of his time. I want to read some of this, all right? Let me read this quickly. It says in Shirach, chapter 7, in verse 19. Yah says this to the man, and I want to read the last verse of Psalms to Helium 21.4. I want to interject this in because it says in Tehillim 21.3, For you shall go before him in the blessings of Tovthing. You set a crown and atara of pure gold upon his head. You set the riches of life upon him. But Shirach says, Do not deprive yourself of a wise and tough wife. For her charm is worth more than gold. Do you hear that? For the beauty of a tough wife, her charm is more excellent than gold. So this trash we call gold today, it is tarnished and trashy. So Yah says, man, don't deprive yourself of a virtuous woman. Don't just react because of your nature. Don't just run because uh, everyone else is doing it and you think that you're left behind. He said, don't, don't deprive yourself uh, of an excellent wife. There are men today that are miserable in their marriages. There are women today that are miserable. Why? Because she was never a virtuous woman. He was never a man at all. He was never a man. It is just an accommodation for both. She can get a job, he can get a job, uh, and they can get a place to stay, and they can live together, and they can lay in bed together, but there is no intimacy there at all. So he says to the man, don't deprive yourself uh, of a tough and a beautiful wife, uh, because her crown is a charm. Uh, it is a strength to life unto a man. Why will not all the bath of Tizayon uh, want to be that, a walk uh, in that strength? Uh, you must be constantly reminded uh, to polish yourself uh, that you can walk that way. You will never walk that way unless you're reminded of it daily. You that have raised children, do you remind them all the time? Daily, don't you? Over and over. Are we children? We must be reminded by Yah. David concludes here in Tehillim 21.4. It says this. Now, this is what the man asked. He asked life of Yah. That's what a crown is. Is he not going to give us the crown of life on that appearing of Yahshua HaMashiach? Is he not going to give us that? That's what she represents, the Atara. She brings life to a man. A virtuous woman brings life to a man. When he's broken, when his heart is smitten, she brings life. Just her touch, her warmth, her wisdom, she brings that to a man. There's nothing like an angry, rotten woman who has rottenness in her bone. She takes life. She kills a man. I'm telling you the truth. Even when daddy was a fool, mama still did right. She was right. She kept how she did what was right. She did not try to embarrass him or refute him. But we do yaw, yaw that way because we are a dirty woman. We are a dirty, sluttish, hoish woman. We love the gods. Now he says here in verse 21 
I mean, chapter 21, verse 4, the verse I want to read. He asks life of you, and you give him, you give it to him. Look, this is what he asking. Now listen now. A woman, a virtuous woman is a crown. The man asks life of Yah, and he, and he, and Yah gives even length of days forever. Olam, Olam V'et. That's what it says, right? Now I want to show you that example in the writings of Shirach. In Shirach 26.1. He said he gives him life. He asks, and he gives him life, and he gives him length of days. Let me show you what brings length of days like nothing else. It says in Shirak 26.1, it says, Barach is the ish, the husband, that has a virtuous, a crown, a virtuous isha. Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife. It says the number of his days will be doubled. That's what it says. That read says in Tehillim 21.4, He has life of you, Yah, and you give it to him, even length of days, forever and ever. He gives that to a man. That's why a man should not deprive himself of a virtuous wife. Hell with the physical aspect. The sensual thing. Don't ever deprive yourself. You young men that are listening, don't deprive yourself of a, of a tough uh, and beautiful wife. Uh, you have to wait all your days you wait. You don't deprive yourself of a virtuous woman. And you pay the price. Whatever the dowry is, uh, whatever it takes you. Yeah. But a man finds that. Bless, he says, Barak, he bows to that man, uh, that husband that has a virtuous wife. Uh, the number of his days will be double. So if he's going to live 50, he go, he's going to live to 100. That's what a virtuous wife, that's what that crown brings to him. That's what a beauty of wisdom, her splendor, her charm brings to him. Causes days to be double. A virtuous, a strong, high end. Virtuous. A virtuous lawyer wife rejoices her husband. She makes him glad. See, we're not a virtuous wife to Yahshua. His heart is saddened today. We can covet things in our hearts that are so evil and so wicked. And we can smile among Yisraeli and we know we're wrong. And it's one thing, Yisraeli, I don't care. We can pretend all we want to. When we walk wrong, everyone can see that. I don't care who you are. A virtuous, loyal wife, she makes the heart of the husband fat. That's a crown. She makes the husband's heart fat. And he will complete his years in shalom. That's what she brings to that man. Confidence and strength. Faithfulness unto Yah. He will complete his years. He will die in the greatest of peace. That's what he will complete his years in. The one that is rotten to the bone, his life is miserable. His life is one of agony, Yisrael. That's why baptism should train the young daughters. Teach them how to love. Because we don't know how to love, you can't teach them. It is not just their fault. They haven't been taught. They don't know, Yisrael. The young man doesn't know how to love his wife. He hasn't been taught. Not many examples before him. That's not love the wife because you act like clowns and laugh together. That's not love. Yeah. Yeah. You don't clown your, your sons and daughters should see the, your strength. Yeah. I've been married as long as many of you all in here and you that are listening. And I can say there's very little laughter, no clowning really. And it hasn't been in my house. To our life, sure, our life. But I don't have anything to laugh about today. There's no laughter. Anything mourning and weeping. And so would our sons and daughters see the folly and the foolishness. There have been homes where the, they sit around the table and family, everybody just laughing and clowning and acting like fools. And that spirit is still in men and women today. They, 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 get, they, get, they get always laughing and acting like clowns and acting like fools. 
Well, in my natural home, we didn't sit around the table that much. No table to sit around. And he could not contain all of us anyway. A virtuous, loyal wife rejoiced the husband. He will complete his years in Shalom. Listen, listen to this. A tough wife is a gadol. She's a great blessing. A virtuous woman, she's a great blessing. She's just not a blessing. I want a tough wife. I just don't want a wife. I want a great blessing. She's a great crown. She's a great blessing. Her hands are busy. She takes care of the house. She gets up early in the morning. She lay her hand to the spindle. She make the clothes for the baby. She makes sure everything is well. She's up and she's down at the well getting the water. And the water is warm to bathe the baby. There's water there for the husband. She rises before anyone in the house rises. Come on, Yisraya. We, we've fallen so far from Yah. These things must be taught and trained and instilled in the daughters, in our sons. Hallelujah. A tough wife is a blessing. A tough wife is a great blessing. Listen. She will be granted among the blessings. He will not find that among the blessings of the man who yare, who fears Yah. He will only give a tough wife to a man that fears him. Would a man understand the depth of his sins and his wickedness? Would he understand his worthlessness? Yah said, I'll give you a jewel. I'll give you a crown. He will only give a man that. When a man is arrogant and, and, and full of deceit and lies, he will never give him that. That's why they're marrying and giving in marriage. It's only for one thing, the sensual desire and the pleasure. Don't worry, the wedding that is coming, uh, you will be invited. All right? No wicked shall be there. You've been invited to that one. Don't worry. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. He says that a tough wife will only be granted upon the blessings of a man that Yahweh that fears Yah. He's the only one that Yah not found that on. Because she's a gem. She's a jewel. She's of great price. She's of great riches. She brings favor. She brings the hand into a man's house. You will only be granted among those that fear Yah. Listen. See the fairness of Yah. He said, whether a man is rich or poor, whether he has much or little, if he has or if he has a tough love toward Yah, if his heart is sincere toward Yah, if he examined himself by the Torah, he constantly examined his mind by the meditation of the Torah. He shall at all time rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Why? Because he has a tough thing. He has an excellent wife. He has a high, he has a strength. You will see his countenance. Even when he doesn't smile, you know there's strength in his forehead. He has a jewel there because Yah has put the jewel there. What is the jewel? Well, it is the virtuous woman. Her price is far above rubies. So what is more expensive than a ruby? A diamond to hell with a diamond. Yah got jewels in his treasure chest and he says only a virtuous woman uh, can represent the power of that jewel. Uh, so he put the jewel in the crown uh, of a man's head. Uh, his mind, uh, she is the centrality of his mind. Why? Because he knows that it has come from Yah. She has a beautiful estate. If she could only hear. Hallelujah. That's all right. Someone called me today and said, Preacher, you have enough messages. If nothing else gets out from you, it will be enough to bless many. I say, Oh, no, we don't have enough. We're going to preach like this until we all decease. And somehow it may, someone may hear this. But the man, Richard Poor, if he have a tough heart toward Yah, he should at all time rejoice with a cheerful countenance. Why? Because his, his jewel will make him cheerful. When he looks at his crown, it makes him happy. You understand? It causes strength to abide. Let me move quickly because I want to close here. Again, it says here in Shirak, I want to drop down to the 13th verse. There's much in there, but for time and expedience. It says here in the 13th verse, it says a wife's virtue, her strength, her beauty, 
delights, her feats, give great pleasure to her husband. And her destruction and skill put fat on his bones. Her labor of love, her hands, her kindness of her lips, it makes him fat. It makes him strong. You got to have fat on your bones to be strong. And else, in essence, it gives calcium to the bones. He becomes strong. His frame is strong. His masculinity, it is represented by the jewel of his crown. She put fat on his bone. That's not what hap what's happening today. No fat on the bone, we're getting fat. But not the spiritual fatness of Yah is being put on the bone, Yisrael. You all can't fight against this. We can't fight against this. It says a silent wife is a gift from Yah. And there is nothing. Do you all hear that? And there is nothing. Does it say that? There is iron. There is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing so precious uh, as a disciplined nephesh or wife of that discipline. There is nothing uh, of greater riches than that. There's nothing. You see how the enemy has robbed uh, and disguised the beauty uh, of what a virtuous woman should be. There's nothing more precious. This is what Yah says. These are not my words. Baptist Zion. There's nothing more precious than a silent, a daughter that has a meek ruach. You don't even have to talk and you speak volume in your countenance, your expression, your attitude. You don't have to say anything. It speaks. And if you are around me as the ach ah, I would say to this one, get your heart right, man. Get your face right. Get your countenance right, man. You're wrong. You got something wicked in you, and you don't want to deal with it. I do it all the time. I've always done that. I say, the reason you look like that, because there's something in your heart, man. And that was one in one particular I had to deal with almost every day. So look at the stupidity of your expression. You're wicked, man. We don't want that today. We don't want nobody to, to show us the muza, the beauty of Yahweh's correction. We don't want that. And that's why we're never healed because we don't confess our faults one unto the other. And we must do that. One of you, I'll preach on that. He's going to preach next week and Zach Cain will preach the following week, all right? Somebody preach on that, all right? The confessing. And he had something that he wanted to teach tonight, but I asked him, to let me teach you this, all right? This is this what we, we, we got to hear this, all right? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It says, a solemn wife is a gift. She's a gift from Yah. Do you all hear that? A solemn wife, if a man doesn't have a wife like that, he has no gift from Yah. A loquitious wife is a gift from hell. But a solemn wife is a gift from Yah. And there's nothing more precious than her discipline effort. A modest, shame faced and faithful wife adds virtue to virtue, strength to strength. And her con content, mind, and chaste nephesh cannot be via her contented mind. It cannot be via. She's contented just in his presence, just around him. She doesn't need Walmart, Kmart, or Dollar Mart. She's not concerned about wealth, money, or things. She's contented just being with him. She rejoices because she's the crown of his strength. And just to see the power of his strength, it blesses her. Like the sun rising in the height of Yah, so is the beautiful Tifra, so is the beauty of a tough wife in her well-ordered home. You tell everything about a woman in her home. Her home is ordered. Her children are ordered. Her sons and her daughters are ordered. They're well ordered. I'm going to teach on a message soon. I'm not going to teach it. I have hundreds of messages that I haven't even touched on. I'm always, if you don't believe me, you can come and I'll set you down and show you. I just don't have the time to do it. But I know it's what we need. Maybe one day Yah grants that to me. 
I labor around here. I have to work. You understand? But one day he grants that. Where I could just sit and teach. And someone will hear it somewhere. You understand? Like the shining, like, like the shining lamp of a Kodesh candlestick. See how those candlesticks shine? So is the beauty of the face in ripe age. So we're getting older, are we not? So virtuous woman, her beauty is like this candlestick, right? Look at that, all of us. Those candlesticks, look at the light. Cannot you see that and tell that? Isn't that beautiful? The flickering. So the flickering of her strength and beauty, you will see that in her countenance. I see a very dead countenance among Yisraya everywhere I go. I don't see it on the baptism. I don't see no beautiful countenance. I don't see the liveliness in their countenance. But you began to draw them into folly and watch how they light up. It's a shame. I want to read this last one and I'm going to close. Hallelujah. 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 It says here in 1st Kepha, Peter, this is what a virtuous woman is like. When the power of Yahshua enter into a man's heart and he understands the beauty of Yahshua, when he comes and brings the wisdom, his wife represents this. 1 Peter 5, 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of honor of life that fades not away. See, it doesn't, that's what a virtuous woman does. She doesn't rob the man of his strength and his beauty. When the power of revelation of Yahshua comes into his life, she is the crown. He looks at her and sees the strength and the beauty of the wisdom of Yah's Torah. And because she is constantly before him, uh, the strength of that word never fades away. What is the strength of what is the crown of the strength and the beauty of man? It is the virtuous woman that Yah intended for every man to have. That's what he intended. May the riches of Yah rest upon Yisra'ah, Yah, Baptizayon, may he strengthen you all. Let us all be encouraged, you that have joined us on the live broadcast. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. May Yah strengthen you all. Let us stand to our feet as we turn toward Yerushalayim. In all things we do, Barak, you are Abba. For your riches, your kindness, your tender mercies, we ask you to take our Achot, Jennifer, home safely, and Achot, plant, and Zachin, Jimri, and his Isha. Down the highways, you watch over us all. We ask you to bless those that join us for the live broadcast. Give us strength, give us all rest. And your shalane, your strength of rest and confidence in your sure this night. We ask all things as we barak Yerushalayim. You said if we barak Yerushalayim, we shall prosper. We do it all in your sure's name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.